Hello everyone, welcome again. In this software testing tutorial, we are going to learn what are defects in software testing. So defects are also known as bugs and a bug and defect are used interchangeably in any projects that you will go through in the actual organization. Now if you browse through the internet, there are a lot of uh, definitions that will say that there is a difference between bug and defect, uh, defect and there is a difference between bug and defect but in the actual real uh, projects nobody is going to bother about those minute defects so defects and bugs are used interchangeably and in actual projects you do not segregate defects and bug into two categories okay but in terms of interview you need to know what is the minute difference between defect and bug which i'll explain in the next tutorial all right but as of now in, as part of this tutorial just consider defects and bugs are same thing and i'll explain what exactly a defect or bug is okay so when we say a defect or bug so if we go through the previous tutorial or try to rephrase so there was a software testing life cycle tutorial that i have posted and in that software testing life cycle what you do is basically you get the uh, or if we talk about the development life cycle as such so you have the requirement from the requirement the developers uh, there is a design being made by the tech architects and all uh, after that design that design is implemented or the coding is done by the developers once the code is being packaged and deployed that's when tester will actually launch the application or the software and start the verification process or the testing process right and when he is doing the testing he or she is doing the testing if the expected result or the actual result basically for a particular test case or scenario is not as expected then that deviation is known as defect or bug in the software okay so it is very simple say for example I'll take an example to explain this to you say for example we have been taking the e-commerce website example now on the e-commerce website I want to log in using the username and password and click on login button right so this is the login button so i have a test case which says when i use the valid username and password and click on login button i should be redirected to the dashboard page right so dashboard now as part of the test case i have provided valid username valid password and clicked on login button but once i click on login button i am not redirected to this particular page right to the dashboard page what happens actually in the test environment is i uh, once i click on the login button this page the login screen get refreshed username password disappear and i'm still on this login page okay so if this is the case this is not what is the expected behavior of the test right so what as a tester i'll do is i'll try to verify i'll make sure that the username and password that i'm using is correct i'll try to analyze the logs and i'll try to analyze the browser logs and see what exactly the error is once i'm satisfied that the the error is actually uh, some sort of um, configuration error or the coding error in that particular case I'll raise that issue or uh, um, the problem into the defect management tool and that is what is defect or bug or that is what is known as defect or bug in the software testing right so any deviation from the expected outcome is a defect in software testing okay so it can be at any level so say for example in the software testing life cycle i am doing the functional testing i can find defect in that once i am into the acceptance testing phase there will be defects on that even after the production deployment if the customer finds that whatever he is looking for into the software he's not uh, his results are not as expected as he mentioned in the requirement then that deviation is also a defect and needs to be raised and fixed in the software right so this is a brief uh, definition of the defect or bug in software testing 
Now, there are a couple of key things um, or key metrics that you need to remember about the defects. So whenever you're doing software testing, some of the key metrics that you need to uh, remember about the defects when uh, during the test execution phase is basically um, the, say for example, critical defect percentage, right? So critical defect, I'll explain um, what critical defects are. So critical defects, say for example, okay? When we say critical defect, these are the defects which block the testing or they are the defects which will have the maximum uh, negative impact on the business or they will have negative impact on the actual processing of the uh, software or the functionality of the software. Any such defect which will have the major impact or either on the revenue or the business are categorized as the critical defect. So for example, this login functionality, right? So login functionality, if it is not working, then how will a user go ahead and log in and uh, place the order? They can do it as guest, but this is one of the key functionality that needs to be fixed. So the, if login functionality of the website is not working, then that defect can be categorized as critical defect. And when you are doing the testing and during the testing phase, when you are finding the defect as a test manager or test lead, you come up with some of the uh, test metrics or the defect metrics. So the first one is basically, um, you know, critical defect percentage. So how you find these metrics? So uh, whatever number of defects you have found, say for example, number of critical, critical defects, okay? So during a particular testing phase, number of critical defects that you find uh, upon total number of defects. So total number of defects during that phase in 200. So that's what your critical defect percentage is. Now, if this critical defect percentage is high, then that means there are lots and lots of critical defects within the application. So this metric helps you to understand what is the code quality or the work that has been done as part of the development. The another important metrics is defect rejection ratio okay so defect rejection ratio now defect rejection ratio is number of defects rejected and upon total number of defects in 200 okay so defect rejection ratio how many defects have been rejected so as a testing team so if we have five people in the testing team and people are raising the defect as soon as they are analyzing the defect and they think that it is a defect once the defect has been raised and analyzed by the dev team and they found that the defect is not because of the code or it's it's some um, issue because of the data that is being used by the test team and they reject the defect that this is not the actual fix that they need to do. You need to follow certain steps to test that particular bit. In that particular case, the defects will get rejected. So what this defect rejection ratio will do is number of defects that got rejected in a particular cycle or a particular phase, you have those numbers here. So for example, 10 defects got rejected out of total 100. So you get a, a defect rejection ratio in that particular context. Now defect rejection ratio and the other one is defect leakage ratio, okay? Defect leakage ratio is also very important metrics. And what defect leakage ratio um, shows you is, so in the leakage ratio, a number of defects let me uh, write it first. So number of defects leaked and upon total number of defects, uh, total number of defects, total number detected, okay? Total number of defects detected here. So detected in that particular phase, total number of, de number of defects detected into 100, right? So defect leakage ratio. So for example, you have a testing phase and after testing phase, the, the uh, application being deployed into the production. Okay. So in the prod. So once your application is in the production, 
how many defects are being found here okay say for example after the production deployment there were 10 defects that were found in the production deployment and in the actual test phase you found 100 defects right so defect leakage ratio is basically number of defects leaked so in the production there were 10 defects that were found and total defects that were detected in the test phase was 100 into 100 right so the ratio of leakage is 10 percent okay this number and rejection ratio number so defect leakage ratio and defect rejection ratio should be as low as possible this shows the effectiveness of your testing activities right so these metrics are really important De defect rejection ratio critical defects there are many other uh, metrics that you can use you can google and find out the different metrics but these are the critical uh, critical ones so defect rejection defect leakage ratio are very important one in terms of test execution it shows how effective your testing is within a particular project right so these are some of the key metrics that you can utilize and uh, along with understanding what exactly is defect or bug in software testing all right so that's all for this tutorial. I hope that this was clear to give you understanding about what exactly is a defect and what are some of the key defect metrics that you can use in your project. Thank you very much for watching.